Welcome to Mikon's hardware. My Chinese packages are still on the way, so I have to do something else. And I happened to assemble a budget gaming computer using AMD Ryzen 5 3600. Since I already have benchmark results for E5 2667v4, Core i3-12100 and E5 2696v3, I have decided to also test Ryzen 5 3600 and add it to this comparison. For this test, I am using the PC that I have assembled, so it's not a test bench, it's the PC itself. And in this PC I have Asus Prime B350 motherboard with the two sticks 8GB each DDR4-3600. Back in the days when AMD just released AMD AM4 platform, we had all sorts of issues with DDR4 speed. These days, after numerous updates to the BIOS and with Ryzen 5 3600, this ancient B350 motherboard has no issues running DDR4 3600, and that's why I went for DDR4 3600 instead of DDR4 3200. All in all, Xeon E5 2667v4 and Ryzen 5 3600 are rather different. Still, these two CPUs are very close in the price point, especially if you check entire platform cost and if you're limited to AliExpress. Thus, I believe this comparison is very valid. Detailed technical specification comparison you can see on your screen, but I will highlight the important parts. Xeon E5 comes with 8 cores 16 threads, Ryzen 5 has 6 cores 12 threads. Xeon E5 is completely locked, it is not possible to overclock the CPU, not possible to overclock memory, and it is not possible to do turbo boost unlock with the Xeon E5 V4 CPUs. Ryzen 5 3600 is unlocked, you can try to overclock the CPU, but it is pretty pointless, and you can also overclock memory. In my case, I left the CPU at stock, but I have enabled Precision Boost Overdrive or PBO, and the memory frequency was overclocked to DDR4-3600 from the standard DDR4-3200. Xeon E5 supports up to DDR4-2400, but we have uh, 4 channels with the Xeon and only 2 channels with the Ryzen 5. The PC Express configuration is also different between these two CPUs. Xeon E5 comes with 40 lanes, but they are limited to PC Express 3.0, while Ryzen 5 has only 20 lanes and they are PC Express 4.0. Still, to be able to use PC Express 4.0, you need a compatible motherboard. In my case, Asus Prime B350 supports only PC Express 3.0. As usual, before I go into the test results, let's take a look at the memory performance using the ADA64 memory and cache test. Much to my surprise, in almost everything Xeon E5 2667v4 is better. The big difference is in memory write speed. Here, Ryzen 5 3600 only gives 28,000 megabytes per second, while with the Xeon E5 we have almost 60 megabytes per second. Memory latency is also better with the Xeon E5, it's about 66 nanoseconds, and with Ryzen 5 we have almost 70 nanoseconds. Even though with Ryzen 5 we have DDR4 3600, and with Xeon E5 we have DDR4 2400. It's worth mentioning that the write speed problem with the Ryzen 5 is a common problem for all AMD Ryzen 3000 CPUs. So, gaming benchmarks. Here I need to remind you that I am using my RX 5700 XT at 1080p with medium to high preset. Yes, in many cases we will be GPU limited, but most of you believe that 5700 XT is the proper graphics card to test these cheap CPUs. I plan to buy a 7900 XT or 7900 XTX for testing, but for now I have only 5700 XT. So let's take a look at these results. Starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Ryzen 5 3600 doesn't give any unexpected results. The performance is almost identical to i3-12100, and it means that it is slightly faster than the Xeon CPUs. On average, the difference is just 1 FPS, but the gap in minimals is a bit bigger. Xeon E5 renders only 67 frames, while Ryzen 5 delivers 73 frames, so the gap is 6 FPS, or about 10%. 
Watch Dogs Legion is a very demanding game, especially towards the CPU performance. Nevertheless, quad-core i3, 6-core Ryzen 5 and 8-core Xeon E5 are delivering almost identical performance. The gap is 3 FPS, 95 FPS with the i3 and 98 FPS with the Xeon E5 2667v4. Unlike Watch Dogs Legion, Far Cry 6 uses only 1.5 CPU core, thus it's unsurprising to see that quad-core i3-12100 is taking the first spot. But comparing the 6-core Ryzen 5 and 8-core Xeon E5, we also see a difference. On average, Ryzen delivers 106 frames per second, while Xeon E5 is only able to render 93 frames per second. Rainbow Six Extraction doesn't really see a difference between these four CPUs. You would need something much stronger than RX 5700 XT to see a difference. On average, all CPUs deliver about 177 FPS. F1 2021 demonstrates almost the same picture as well. Here, Core i3-12100 is just one frame faster than a Ryzen 5 3600, and E5-2667v4 is one more frame behind. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is a bad example for Ryzen 5 3600. Here, the Ryzen CPU is only able to render 124 FPS, while Xeon E5 2667v4 delivers 133 FPS. This is almost 10 FPS gap, and I would say it's rather significant. But I also need to mention that here I use built-in gaming benchmark. The real online gaming performance might be different when you use these two CPUs. Hitman 3 is another title where Ryzen 5 performs rather poorly. It is able to render only 159 FPS, which is still plenty enough, but the Xeon E5 2667v4 is able to deliver 169 FPS, so yet again Ryzen 5 is 10 FPS behind the Xeon. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we are mostly GPU limited, still we see a little bit of a gap between the CPUs. i3-12100 takes the first place with 120 FPS, then we have Ryzen 5, 116 FPS, and E5 2667v4 takes the last spot with 114 FPS. The gap is not that big, but we still see that Ryzen is a just tiny bit faster. Total War 3 Kingdom is also mostly GPU limited, but Ryzen 5 3600 somehow manages to render one less frame than all other three CPUs. So to see the real gap between the CPUs, we would need something more stronger than 5700 XT. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is an old but still rather demanding game. Much to my surprise, Ryzen 5 3600 is not shining here either. It delivers 94 and 122 FPS, while Xeon E5 2667v4 is rendering 88 and 123 FPS. So, on average, across all these tested games, Ryzen 5 3600 and Xeon E5 2667v4 with RX 5700XT are demonstrating virtually identical performance. Ryzen 5 3600 renders 88 and 128 FPS, while Xeon E5 2667v4 gives us 85 and 129 FPS. So the minimals are better with the Ryzen CPU and averages are basically identical. Xeon E5 is just less than one frame per second faster and uh, that might just be a benchmarking error. Of course, I also need to take a look at the power consumption, uh, starting with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where all configurations deliver about the same performance. So here, entire system with Ryzen 5 3600 consumes about 310 watts of electricity. Under the same benchmark, uh, the system with E5 2667v4 consumes about 313 watts of electricity. As you can see, Ryzen 5 3600 and E5 2667v4 are not only delivering about the same gaming performance, but also consume about the same amount of electricity while gaming. Unfortunately, I can't say the same about the workstation benchmarks. For example, in Cinebench R23, when using all CPU cores, Ryzen 5 scores about 9600 points. Xeon E5 2667v4, even though it has 8 cores and not 6, scores only 8800 points, while the system power consumption with the Ryzen CPU stays at about 138 watts, with the Xeon E5 it is almost 10 watts more, 147 watts. Thus, if we do calculations, we will see that Ryzen is slightly faster, slightly less power consumption, which means a significantly or substantially better efficiency. 
If I run Cinebench R23 with just one thread, then Ryzen 5 scores about 1255 points. Xeon E5 gives us almost 900 points, while both of the systems consume about 75 watts electricity during the test. Since Ryzen gets better score, we again see that efficiency of the Ryzen system is significantly or substantially, depends on how you look at it, better than the Xeon E5 system. Now, let's take a quick look at potential budget gaming configurations using these CPUs. I have viewers from many different countries, thus I cannot pick price values that would satisfy everyone, so I decided to stay with AliExpress. But I'm also going to add information about this particular build, where I used my local Swedish secondhand market to assemble this Ryzen 5 system that I used for testing. So let's start with i3-12100F. The cheapest I found on AliExpress would be 87 euros. For the motherboard, I picked Huanan GH610M+. It's just the cheapest I could find that I could recommend. It costs about 70 euros. For Core i3, we can go with the cheapest DDR4 memory as long as it is DDR4-3200, and in this case it is going to be Atermiter or Atermiter, two sticks 8GB each for total about 35 euros. And the total price of this configuration would be 192 euros. Trying to assemble the same configuration with Ryzen 5 3600 from AliExpress is a bit harder, because we need a good quality RAM or at least a decent RAM for Ryzen. We also do not have cheap Chinese decent AM4 motherboards, but there is a bunch of branded motherboards to pick from. So Ryzen 5 3600 on AliExpress, the lowest I could find, is 73 euros. For the motherboard, I picked the Gigabyte B450MK, and this one can be found for about 70 euros. For memory, I would not go with the China brand of DDR4 modules because these are coming with horrible timings, and the horrible timings are hurting performance with Ryzen CPUs rather much. So I decided to go with exactly the same two sticks of 8GB DDR4-3600 from Kingston. Unfortunately, that will cost you about 62 euros, and that's why the total configuration cost is gonna be even higher than with i3, 205 euros. The last AliExpress configuration is Xeon E5 2667v4. Right now the CPU can be found for about 33 euros. For the motherboard we go with Huanan X99 QD4 for 70 euros. And for memory we are getting 4 sticks 8GB each from that Artermiter brand with a DDR4 2400 speed for the total price of 52 euros. The total price for this configuration would be 155 euros. And finally, my local Ryzen configuration comes with the following prices. For the CPU, I paid only 60 euros, and for the Asus Prime B350 motherboard, I paid just 30 euros. For the memory, I paid 55 euros, and I got it from a local store, so that was a very good deal. I bought it in new, and it is cheaper than on AliExpress. The total build cost for this combo costed me just 145 euros. Now, with these prices, we can see that the local second-hand Ryzen build has actually the best value. It only demands 1.12 euros for one FPS. And if we are talking about the AliExpress configurations, then of course E5 2667v4 has the best value. The combo costs only 155 euros, while the performance is almost on the same level as i3-12100F. So we are paying 1.2 euros for 1 FPS. With Core i3-12100, we would have to pay 1.44 euros for 1 FPS. And finally, for the Ryzen 5 configuration with AliExpress prices, we have to pay 1.58 euros for 1 FPS. The final conclusion I will leave on you, because we can make all sorts of arguments. There always will be people who say that Ryzen 5 3600 is the obvious choice, because AMD AM4 platform has a virtually unlimited path for upgrades. You can install Ryzen 7 5800X3D, and that is one of the best gaming CPUs ever made. Others will say that Xeon E5 2667v4 is the obvious winner because the total build price is about 50 euros less with about the same performance and double the memory. 
And of course, there will be people who say that i3-12100F is the winner because you always have to go with Intel, because you do not have problems with memory speed, and because you are getting a modern platform. I would say that all of these arguments make sense, but you need to decide for yourself what exactly you need and what exact options you have. Always check your second-hand market, always check your local stores, and only after that go to AliExpress. I also always recommend my customers to buy exactly what they need and exactly what they need now, not what they want and not what they will need in 2-3 years. With this I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it's helpful, see you in the next video, bye bye.